All right, hello everyone. Today we're gonna be going over the pro first person horror template, uh, the 2.0 update. It's gonna be pretty quick, pretty simple. I rebuilt it from the ground up to be a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to change things, um, as well as it's got a few new features. So we'll go over those as well. Um, to start, if you wanna change some of the character settings, um, instead of opening the pro first person character like we normally would, we're actually going to access a data table. So to do that, we're going to go to core data and here's our character settings data table. So instead of changing variables or messing around inside the blueprints and like having to dig through everything, you can access everything you want to change really easily from this nice data table. So if you want the character to have a flashlight by default, all you got to do is check a box and it'll have a flashlight by default. You can also turn that off and you can change the interaction trace length, um, the default field of view, the aim field of view, sprint field of view. And this will all automatically update uh, once you change these numbers. We also have things here like the camera tilt, which is a nice new little feature that I added. I'll show you guys what that looks like. It just slightly tilts the camera when you look side to side. You can turn that off if you don't like it. You can increase or decrease the amount allowed that to tilt. You can also disable the automatic depth of field feature that was available in the 1.0 update or disable camera shake, the head bobbing, um, as well as change your walk speeds and zoom speeds. It's all pretty easy. What's extra nice about using a data table is that we can have multiple different settings. So right now we just have a default setting and the carrot will automatically inherit all of these properties. But if we wanted to add a new one, I just click this add button. I'm gonna rename it to, let's just do test for now. And now you can have all of these values separate. So these are all still retained. They're all how we set them up before. Now we have a second one to choose from. So for this one, let's say I want them to start with flashlight by default. Let's have the same trace length for interactions, but I want a tighter field of view for default an even tighter field of view than that for our aimed. And let's do go back to 80 for our sprint. So we have a wider field of view for our sprint. I'm going to keep our camera tilt disabled. So we don't need to adjust this at all. Let's say I do want the depth of field. I don't want camera shake and I'm just gonna put all of our speeds to 300 for now just so we can finish showing you guys how this works so now the only thing we need to do to make our character use this is open our pro first person character blueprint and over here to the side on our variables tab you'll see there's a settings tab if we open that there's one variable in here called settings now all we need to do is change this from default to test. And then it'll automatically update all of those things for us. So that way you can have as many different character settings as you want and easily switch between them. Quickly test things out, not have to change a whole bunch of things or change them back. You can just keep what you want and get rid of what you don't like. So with all that out of the way, the only thing you really need to worry about in the pro first person character and blueprint is the post process settings here. Instead of having all of these uh, variables accessible in a material like they were before, you can now access them directly from the blueprint. So you can change things like lens distortion, intensity, the radius, and the fall off, as well as the image sharpness and the sharpness offset. So let's just see how they look now. Everything looks about the same as usual. And then let's change this distortion intensity quite a bit higher just to get a better idea as well as the sharpness and the sharpness offset. And already you can tell we have a much crispier looking image. Uh, all of those things are now easily accessible right here on the post-process initialization function. Alrighty, next we're gonna go over the two new features that were added for the 2.0 update. 
and that's going to be our note system as well as the new grab system so to start you can see here I have this uh, example notes blueprint right here it's a lot of different things you can change without even having to open this but before we do that um, I'm just gonna navigate to where these are in the files and drag out a completely new one so right away coming back to these note settings tab and our outliner here you can change the mesh if you have a different paper mesh you can change the material for that mesh you can also change the collision radius right here so if you're having trouble picking up notes and you want a little bit larger of a pickup radius you can change that right there very easily and then our note widget texture is going to be the texture that pops up when we interact with the note you can see we also have an option to change what sound plays when the note is picked up or interacted with so that's all pretty easy pretty straightforward I'm gonna go ahead and change this from note one to note two. I'm gonna leave the sound the same and let's just increase the radius just to see what that looks like in game. So now you can see when I come over here, I can interact with it. It brings up the texture that we changed it to and it all works as intended, it's that easy. Next, we're going to set up the new grab system. And what's great about this system is it doesn't use any sort of base blueprint to work. So you can use it on anything that has physics enabled, and the system will automatically detect it, and you'll be able to pick it up and move it. So just to show you how to get that set up real quickly, let's go ahead and add a new physics actor. So I'm just going to drag this cube in, and let's size it down a little bit just so it's not in our way too much. I scroll down and set simulate physics and then here in our collision instead of it being physics actor I'm going to change it to custom that way we can set the pickup channel here to block now the very last thing we need to do is in our details panel here is search tags we want component tags not actor tags so here in our component tags I'm going to add a new element and I'm just going to type in physics pickup and that's all we need to do now it should be working with our new grab system just fine so let's see what that looks like in editor all right and as you can see we've got our little pickup icon working there so I'm just going to interact with it and that'll automatically pick it up and we can move it around we can do whatever we want with it put it back down and that's all there is to it so that's it for all the new features and all the new settings, everything that's been moved around. But I do want to note that everything in this template has been rebuilt from scratch. So everything should be working smoothly. We've got a lot less on our tick here. We've got a big performance update in that way. Everything has been presented in a lot more polished way. Even our demo map here has been completely rebuilt from scratch just to look a little nicer. Uh, give you a better idea of what can be built using this system. So if you have any questions about what's new or what's been rebuilt or what's been moved around, things that you are familiar with that feel unfamiliar now, just let me know. But for now, I think that's it. If I missed anything or if you have any additional questions, feel free to comment or hop on the Discord linked below and I'll be happy to talk to you there as well. Please subscribe so you don't miss anything I'm working on. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.